Penny is here now. Hello, Gus. Hello, Miss Penny. Is my daddy here? Penny, come here, please. Penny, I have some sad news for you. But you'll be a brave little girl, won't you? Is, is it about my daddy? Yes, Penny. Has, has anything happened to him? No, no, dear, no. But he sent for you. You're going to leave us. Are you going to take me right now, Gus? Right this minute? Yes, Miss Penny. I'm going to live with my daddy at the Riverview? Yes, Miss Penny. On and on for keeps? Yes, Miss Penny. Oh, Gus. Uh, maybe I better wait outside. It's very sad news, Miss Vincent. But I want to be brave. Even though I am going to miss everybody so much. And now I better pack, don't you think? Oh, yes. It's not polite to keep people waiting. No, dear. Please, may I be excused? I feel awful sad about leaving you, Miss Vincent. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Miss Burns. I wonder why Mr. Hale is taking her out of school so suddenly. They're going abroad, no doubt. It wouldn't be finances. His last check is overdue. Finances? Hardly. With the river view as an address? <laughs> Fine doorman you are. Let me go right through the door. What kind of a doorman you call that? Hello, Mr. Waters. I'm back. Uh, Miss Hale, uh... Oh, Miss Hale, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Hale, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. All right, have it your way, then. Who are you? Who are you? Who? You're my pal Penny. She be DC. Well, Papa be DC. Wait, dear. What'd she say? What did she say? Did you not listen? A lesson we have one week behind. J'habite DC. I live here. That proves how stupid you are. You don't live here, and neither does she. Don't mind him. He's all mixed up. I'm the one who lives here. My daddy and me. I beg your pardon. This is my uncle's apartment, and I live here with my mother and my sister and my uncle Sam. Now kindly vacate our premises. Do you think I don't know where I live? We've lived here three years, and unless you want trouble with my daddy, you better get out and... I'm more sorry than I can say, Mrs. Ramsby. I'm deeply embarrassed. Come along, Miss Hale. Come quickly. But why? But what are all little girls sketch you? Daddy! I'm taking you to your daddy, daddy right now. Where this I... is very unfortunate. I apologize. It will never happen again, I assure you. I'm very sorry. I'm distraught, distraught. Daddy! Miss Hale, will you please... Daddy! Oh, Children are impossible these days. They don't ask if they live in your house. They just tell you. They walk right in and tell you. You haven't a moment of privacy without some child coming in to tell you she lives with you. Mother, I pointed out her mistake to her emphatically. Not only in English, but in French. In French? Bah! Why did Daddy move? He liked our penthouse, and I loved it. Oh, questions, questions. Curiosity killed a cat once. Your cat? Yes. Uh, no. And stop saying our penthouse. It isn't yours. Not anymore. Kitty! Kitty, oh. darling! Oh, I'm so glad. Show, show me a tail to our father's apartment. Oh. Oh. This is my new job since I've seen you last. I think it's a wonderful way to earn money. Just playing with dogs. Yeah, that's what I thought when I took the job. But everybody's got their troubles, I guess. Gee, even little half-pints like you. 
Now, you got a good, strong chin. Keep it up, darling, no matter what happens. What for? Hello, well, Penny. Hello, Mr. O'Toole. Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale. Daddy. Penny. to the penthouse. A lot of funny people live there now. No wonder you moved down here. Did Gus take you up there? Oh, no. I just supposed. I mean, I thought Gus didn't take me. Well, he's working for those people now because we haven't any job for him. I sold our car. Oh. Well, then, you and I are going to have a lot of nice walks together, aren't we? <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember how hard I used to work before you went away to school? How I was always planning buildings and putting them up? We had hardly any time at all to be together. And you were tired all the time. Well, that wasn't so good, was it? But it made money. We had money to live in a penthouse and have a car and Gus and all the others. But now it's awfully hard to get jobs. And there seem to be enough buildings. So I'm not working when we haven't so much in our pocketbook. But you see what that means? It means we have all that extra time to be together. That's a lot better, isn't it? Sure it is. But there's one thing I want to do. There's one thing I want to finish. That's the one building your daddy wants to finish. Why? I put all my money into it. A lot of other men did, too, because it, it took a great deal. Then we had bad times, and a, and a banker came along and took it away from us. What's a banker? <laughs> a banker? A banker is a sort of person that, uh, that keeps things that belong to other people. You mean a burglar? <laughs> oh, no. No, darling, not that. But we're not licked. And your daddy is going to make that banker understand that he must let me go through with the deal. And then we can move upstairs and you can go back to school. Who wants to go upstairs and go back to school? Not me. I like it here. There aren't so many stairs to climb and the rooms are small. I don't have to walk around so much. <laughs> My legs are so short, it used to wear me out walking across that big apartment. And it was so high, I used to get dizzy looking down at all the people. Remember? Now it's different. I can look up. It'll be fun guessing what kind of people go with all those feet. And besides, it's about time somebody looked after you. A man without a woman around the house is quite a problem. Stand still, Corset. Why do they call him Corset? He's tied in all day and they let him loose at night. Hello, Penny Darling. Hello, Miss Lola. Welcome home. My goodness, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Miss Lola. I'm glad I went away. It's so much fun to come home again. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Well, now, what do we do first? Go to a movie or take a drive in the park or... Well, I may not have much time. I have a man to take care of. And you know how much trouble they can be. I certainly do. Well, we'll talk about it later. Bye, darling. Bye, Miss Lola. Isn't she nice, Kitty? When she came up to see me at school with Daddy, even Miss Vincent liked her. She's okay, but believe me, the rest of her tribe are wacky. Hey, baby, look. I put on a punch board. Well, you didn't do bad for a punch drunk. Yeah. I'm going back every day. Maybe I'll punch out a swing band. <laughs> Keep punching. That's what I always say. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. What is that thing? That ain't a thing. It's a sax. A lease breaker. What do you think of it? <laughs> The old pickle puss upstairs is allowed to come down here all spraddled out. A pickle puss? Is that what you call Mr. Water? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I wouldn't repeat it if I were you. Why shouldn't you repeat it? What's the harm in calling the pickle puss a pickle puss? You might give the kid ideas. You know, you're not exactly up on child psychology. 
I ain't down on it. This is a happy little ditty. I know the music isn't pretty. You know the words are not so witty. Anyone can sing this song. Change keys, it really doesn't matter. There's still a lot of silly chatter. Ho, hum, we're coming to the pattern. Jack and Jim went up the hill, and for all I know, they're up there still. I must say, the music isn't pretty. Must say, the words are not so witty. This is a happy little ditty. You can sing it all day long. This is a happy little ditty. I know the music isn't pretty. You know the words are not so witty. Anyone can sing this song. Hold on, kids, we're coming to the pattern. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. It must have been awful stuffy in there. Still, sir, the music isn't pretty. Still, sir, the words are not so witty. This is a happy little ditty. You can sing it all day long. Mr. Hale, I may owe you a debt of gratitude for past favors, but... Now what's happened? But I am jeopardizing my position by allowing you to reside here any longer. What are you leading up to? Your daughter. She has a capacity for making otherwise sane individuals go berserk. Now, unless you teach her to respect the dignity of the Riverview Arms, you must go, or I shall have to get a new engine, uh, engineer. No, that is final. Final.
won't let me have it. No, sweetheart, not that. But what have you been doing, Mr. Waters? Oh, don't let's talk about me all the time. How about you? I have my fingers crossed and my feet crossed. Did that big bag listen to our plan? He did not. He wouldn't even see me. Never mind. If he comes here, we'll throw him out. We won't be here to throw him out if you don't behave. Waters will throw us out. Why can't people be nice to other people? What's that? Wait a minute. That's it. What's it? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's going to be all right now. I'm going to see a man. When I come back, everything's going to be all fixed. Money, job, and everything. Jeff! Lola. He's all alone. There isn't a soul in the house. Well, you're an angel. Come in. Come in. What do you want? Good luck, darling. Well, I've never seen you before. I think it's time you did. Hmm? I worked for you for two years. Oh, yeah? Did I fire you? What's your name? Jeff Hale. Yeah. I think you'll remember the name. Oh, Mr. Hale. Yeah, the expensive Mr. Hale. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hale, the architect. Yeah, the man who dreamed of the majestic Eastgate project. I worked through Mr. Warner, my attorney. Yeah, well, you may have worked through him, but you got to me for $10 million. Yeah, you're the genius that handed me that $10 million lemon. It isn't a lemon. If you had vision, you... Vision? Don't you talk to me about vision. Get, come here. Yeah, look, look at that. Yeah, I don't need any vision to see that. But I'll need a lot to see any of that $10 million again. Who let you in here, young man? If you want the truth, Lola did. Hmm. She believes in this project. She believes in me. And I believe that you are the nerviest rascal that I ever met in a life knee-deep in rascals. Using my niece to get in here. Feeding her your crack brain schemes. Careful. Remember your stomach. Yeah, you leave my stomach out of it. And you leave her out of it, too. She's crack brain enough without your help. She's the sanest one in the family at that. But they're all Einsteins compared to you. Get... Come here. Now, you get. Mr. Henshaw. Get! Jack, what happened? How'd he come out? Awful. Oh, darling, sit down and tell me all about it. There isn't much to tell. I told him, and then he told me, but he had an edge. And he wouldn't even listen to what you had to say? Honestly, darling, even if he is my own uncle, Don't, Bob, you I... can't call him anything that I haven't. Jeff, I know how we could get around him. Well, let's forget about it. Oh, so you're quitting. I'm not quitting, but what can I do? Listen, Jeff, I've been handling him since I was a little girl, and I've always gotten what I wanted. You won't get anywhere trying to fight with him. Got to go around him. Come on, let's try it my way. Just to make conversation, what's your way? By way of Connecticut. Come on. Connecticut? What do we do in Connecticut? Get married. Married? Yes, don't you see, Jeff, once you're in the family, my uncle would have to do something. His pride would be at stake. What about my pride? Well, you can be proud when the building's built and people live in it. It's a failure now. You can't be proud of that. You don't understand. What good would it do me to get it that way? Supposing it's flopped, then look. Married. Drowning out married life in the basement. Oh, but darling, I don't care where I live if it's with you. That's what you think now. But you wouldn't think so as month after month passed on. First you'd make up with the old weasel, then you'd start calling on the penthouse, and before long you'd see no reason why I shouldn't move up there with you. So that's what you think of me. That's how much faith you have in my love for you. I'm trying to be realistic. Don't tell yourself stories, Just Lola. because you're a quitter, you think I'm a quitter, too. So I'm a quitter. That's a lovely sentiment. Nice to know. All right, I'll prove it to you. I'm quitting right now. Good. That suits me fine. Mother's little lamb. Now you go to the playroom, darling. Be sure and play only with the good little boys and girls. Be careful of your nice new suit. Oh, darling. 
Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, au revoir, Maman. <laughs> au revoir, mon petit. <laughs> now, don't forget to come back for cocktails. Tea, darling. Mother wants to show you off to our friends. <laughs> come on, Sam. Give me some water. That's what you squealers always get. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that'll teach you a lesson. You can't fool a G-woman. G-man! How many times do I got to... You can't fool a G-man. Now we'll get the other rats with squeal. Who is he, Muggsy? Not me. I'll cut it off, Muggsy. I'm not the last time. Fight the squealer. Hey, Mug, you want to play? I wouldn't be adverse to it. Does that mean he does or don't? I don't know. Okay, you're the squealer. You mean I'm the informer? You'll find out what we mean. Come on, we're taking you for a ride. That's what happened to guys with rat on the gang. Just a minute. I'll be something else. I don't choose to be a squealer. Well, we choose you. <laughs> Courage for a girl. For a play in that neighborhood, I have to have. I trust this is the inception of a beautiful friendship. Oh, do you want to play some more? Oh, Come no. On. That's more like work. But I can take you up to the playroom. That's far superior to anything in town. I know. I used to play there. We can have a ripping time. Tag, you're it! up to play with Milton. Our mothers would never stand for our playing with you. Miss Hale, you will leave here at once. Why, Mr. Waters? Miss Hale doesn't belong here. She's the daughter of our house engineer, and she's not allowed in the playroom. He can't put you out if I want you here. Your mother would certainly uphold me, Master Ramsby. Never mind, Milton. It's a good thing Mr. Waters came, because I almost forgot. I have to help my daddy get dinner. <clears throat> she even has to cook. Well, at least, I'm a good cook. And stay out. Very sorry, it will never happen again. Well, never. Mr. Waters, I yes? wish to register a slight protest. Well, you protest to your mother. Uh -huh. Why, uh, your mother, I will... I certainly will never. Sweet. Uh, I got something in my eye. Sweetie. Hmm. Let me try and get it out for you. It, it'll be all right. When I was a little boy, I always found the quickest way to remove extraneous matter from the eyes was to put something in the mouth. Thank you. Daddy. Daddy. I think I lost your job for you. Huh? I was up in the playroom, and I didn't mind what Gwendolyn said, but Mr. Waters came in, and, and he said I shouldn't be there, because I was only the engineer's daughter. Well, and so you are. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's... it's honorable, isn't it? Absolutely. Daddy, I just don't understand. 
Why is everything so mixed up? Well, maybe this picture will make you understand. You see all these people? The farmer, the housewife, the laborer? Look what they're doing. They're all pulling on this one poor fellow, Uncle Sam. What has he done? He's done everything he can, and still it's not enough. He gives and he gives, and he tries to make everything right. There just doesn't seem to be any end to it. Is he the president? He's greater than the president, darling. He's the most important thing in the whole country, maybe in the world. I don't think it's fair for everybody to worry Uncle Sam, especially when he gives all the money he can all the <laughs> time. It's not only money, darling. He has to find places for people to live and clothes for them to wear, find jobs. That's the most important thing. How are you going to like that? Mm. Daddy, it's a wonder somebody doesn't try to help Uncle Sam for a change. Well, lots of us try. Well, I hope Uncle Sam doesn't get discouraged. Don't you worry about that. He's a tough old bird. And pretty soon he'll be back on his feet, stronger than ever. And then watch things boom. And I'll build the tallest buildings in the whole world, and lots of them. Then we'll be happy, won't we? Mm hmm Gus. Hello, Toots. Gee, but you're beautiful. Just like a repaint job. Oh, never mind that. Did you read the morning paper? No, I only look at the funny pictures. Why? Well, get a load of this. You may be looking for a job. And me with the ring almost paid for. Only 36 more installments. Never mind, baby. You can always eat as long as I got a job. Can I? Yeah, dog biscuits. Gee, you're a swell kid. Ooh, aren't those pretty? White orchids. Most delicate of flowers. How do you do, Mr. Hanshaw? I'm all right. Yeah, well, how about a statement, Mr. Hanshaw? No! Uh, I ain't talking any facts, you sir. Not in your business. Yeah, well, who's that? That's my Uncle Sam. Everybody knows him. Uncle Sam? Hey, Mr. Hanshaw, the manager. Hold it Aren't you going to help it? And implicate myself? Hardly. Shame on you, Brady Cat. It's the only way to save the country. They didn't kill us that time. You're safe for a little while, Uncle Sam. Yeah, Uncle Sam. There, you'll be all right. Yeah, I'm not all right. Yes. James says, I'm over here to help Uncle Sam. Such impertinence, Miss Hale. Uh, really, Mr. Henshaw, I can't tell you how sorry what I am. What have you to be sorry for? Uh, why, uh, this young lady, isn't she annoying you? Uh, well. Well. Uh, well. Here, you. Milton, come back here. Ah, uh, my nephew. <laughs> A walking encyclopedia with curly hair, dressed up in fancy pants, and he's supposed to fill my shoes someday. I guess you get pretty tired of it all, don't you, Uncle Sam? You tired? I'm sick of the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> it... Say, who are you, anyway? I'm Penny. You Penny? Oh, yeah. I suppose that's what you're waiting for. No, thank you. Why not? There are too many people taking money from you now. I wouldn't think of it. Eh? Huh? I'm usually around about this time every day. If you need any more help, just call and I'll come. Huh? Goodbye, Uncle Sam. Keep your chin up. <coughs> the less hair you have, the better Uncle Sam will like it. Then he won't call you a curly-haired encyclopedia again. I can't imagine anything any sillier than trying to please Uncle Sam. It can't be done. Hold still now. Hey. Mind that works beautifully. You have to cut them all off? Certainly. How can you fit Uncle Sam's shoes someday? You wear fancy pants and have curls. <laughs> Let me see how it looks. No, you better wait till I'm finished. Now you want to get a general idea. I've... 
I've changed my mind. You must stop this instantly. I'm suddenly aware of the grave significance of this. Are you a man or are you a mice? No, absolutely no. You shall not take off another strand. Oh, very well. If you want to look like a little girl, it's nothing to me. I hate curls on boys. But of course, that doesn't matter to you. But it does. In fact, that's the only reason why, why I agreed to in the first place. If you want to stop there, it's all right with me. Penny. I'm very busy. You can cut off the rest of them. Well, I'm not sure that I want to. But of course, if you insist... It's the first time this ever happened to me. Getting your hair cut? No. Giving in to somebody because I wanted to. Giving in to a girl. Giving in to such an attractive girl. It's quite a change. But I think you would like it. You look uh, more grown up. There, look. I do look more vigorous, don't I? Mm-hmm. Just wait till your mother sees you. Oh, I say. She did adore those curls. Hiya, Penny! <laughs> Hi, Muggsy! Who's that? That's Muggsy. <laughs> Hiya, Bright Eyes. Say, where's the fancy layout you want to swap me for? Muggsy's going to help us. Just getting your hair cut isn't enough. You've got to wear He-Man clothes, too. Right there on Milton. They're very expensive, Muggsy. Come on. I beg your pardon. Come on! One buck. Hey! Hey, wait! Hey, go back here! You can't do that! Come back! Graham, bright eyes! I wouldn't wear that fancy layout if you'd give me a grand. Hey, give him back his money! You're gonna make me. Take your hands off that woman, do you hear me? So what? So this. I wonder what's keeping Milton. I do want to show him off to you. I can hardly wait. Uh -huh. You must be very proud of him. I am very proud of him. It must be the mother in me. Mustn't go in there. Why, Master Milton, what has happened? Shh. Mm. Is that you, Lammy? Hmm? Uh-huh. I'll bring you right up to you. Uh -huh. You horrid little boy. What are you doing here? Mater, I'm Milton. The shop is too much for Mrs. Ramsby. Is this your work? Yes, sir. Part of it. But I didn't do as I. His girls. His beautiful girls. Take that awful child away. Yes, come along. Oh, come into my study, young man. You too, young woman. Come on. Black eye and your hair cut. Now then, young lady, did you cut Milton's curls off? Yes, sir. It, where's his fancy pants? Muggsy has them on now. Milton traded him. That's how he got the black eye. But you ought to see Muggsy. We didn't count on the black eye, did we? He really looked very good before he got that. I, I guess it's an awful shock to you. 
you go ahead and get mad if you want to. I don't mind if you're sour and cross. Anyone would be with all these people hanging on their necks. What do you know about this family? As though you have enough troubles with business and the slump and all. But they can't like you. You're a tough old bird. You'll come out all right. Yeah, well, upon my soul, here. There's a silver dollar for you, and there's a silver dollar for every black eye you get. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Here. Knock it. <clears throat> now get! That's love for you. Do you think I ought to tell my daddy that she's in love with him so much? Oh, he'll undoubtedly find out for himself. Although we could probably save considerable time. We wanted to cooperate. Certainly embarrassing having a sister going around sighing all the time. I think if she knew how much my daddy thinks about her, she'd feel better. Let's tell her. It might be interesting psychologically. <clears throat> you tell her and I'll attend to some other details. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello, Penny. If you're waiting for anybody, I won't sing. Oh, no, I'm not waiting for anybody. In the moonlight, Anne, in that pretty dress, I thought maybe... No, I'm supposed to be helping Mother entertain Mr. Waters. But he's in there, Anne, and you're out here. Not for long, I'm afraid. All right, Penny, tell me what you've been doing with yourself. I've been very busy taking care of my daddy. By the way, how is he? When he's with me, he's, he's fine. But I don't think he's so cheerful inside. Oh, maybe you just imagine that. But you think he has something on his mind? I think he's worried. Probably because he hasn't any buildings to build. I think he's worried about you. Oh, Penny, you're just guessing. What makes you think so? Because he's always asking me questions about you. <laughs> just like you're asking me questions about him. Oh, Penny! Goodness, you must feel better. Excuse me. I've got to find Nelson. Come in. What's wrong up here? The wall on a terrace is a short circuit. The short circuit? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> Here. You ought to know you sent for me. I sent for you? Oh, well, that's pretty thin. Sure it is. It'd be better if I'd made it up myself. I wouldn't have come near the place if someone hadn't called me. Well, before I'd call you, I'd... I didn't call you, Jeff. But I'm awfully glad you're here. Then there's nothing wrong? Nothing that a little common sense won't heal. It's excruciating, <laughs> Mr. Walter. It's excruciating! Nothing where's Lola? Lola! Yes, Mother. Oh, she's out the night air again. It isn't good for her. Then what kind of air can you get at night? But night air. <laughs> oh, Lola. Oh, yes, Mother. Mother, you know Mr. Hale. Whatever is he dressed like that for? He... He just came from a masquerade. Oh, 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 I love masquerade. I went once at a New England boy dinner. Mother, Penny's <laughs> Mr. Hale's little daughter. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, it's too amazing. She's such a busy little thing, isn't she? When she cut off Milton's curls, I was so upset that the doctor had to give me... Uh, 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 what was it, Lola? Shots, Mother. Oh, yes, of course, shots. And don't they shoot you in the oddest places? <laughs> uh, well, out of sight, out of mind, don't you say, Mr. Gale? Hale, Mother. Oh, uh, oh, yes, of course, Mr. Hale. Just like Hale Columbus. 
Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we order something to drink? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, of course. Lola, you ring for it. Oh, no, my dear, no. No, you stay here and talk to Mr. Walters and Mr. Payne. Oh, right. I'll do it myself. Shall we? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, you know, I... Uh... Don't go out of the water. and play with it. Yes, I right. want... We now, listen, please, please, if you will just... Yes. Now, listen, I... Right. Now, please, please, not this at all. This is absolutely right. absurd. Have you ever played Blind Man's Bluff? You'll love it. It's a wonderful game, Mr. Oh, Waters. Blind Man's Bluff. Now, come on. Uh, can you see? Uh, can I see? Well, of course I can't see if you had anything... No, to... Pinky, no. Uh, now, the object of the game is to find Lola. We'll shut down. Oh, to find Lola. It isn't so silly after all if I... Now, when we say hot, it means you're cold. And when we say cold, you're far away. Come on, put your hands right, oh, 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 I'm sorry, old man. I apologize. I... But it was your, your son. You see, that they oh, just took my clothes. Come on, we get some nice dry clothes. Yeah. You get some. Yeah. Oh, daughter. You must have some dry clothes. Oh, yes. Well, you... No, you here again? Get out. Jeff. Lola. You stay here. I forbid you have anything more to do with that rent. Those are orders. Now, see here. You've outshouted this family for years, but you're not going to outshout me. I love that man, and I'm going to marry him. Over my dead body, you'll marry him. I'm going to marry him if it's over everybody's dead body. You won't marry him. If you'd only listen to him about that East Gate project, instead of being a stupid old, old... Old uh, what, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Sam. Really, I am. But I'm not giving in. I'm going to marry Jeff Hale. Well, you win. Uh, you wouldn't be my niece if you didn't have a will of your own. Uncle Sam, you don't mean it. You're going to, uh... Live in the basement, I suppose? We won't have to live in the basement if you'll listen to Jeff. He has so much to offer Uncle Sam. All he needs is to have someone cooperate instead of fighting him. Mm. If you'll just do something for him. Well, maybe I can do something for him. Uncle Sam, you're a pig! Uh, uh, some change in tone, my dear. Yeah, hello. Henshaw speaking. Little matter you can attend to for me, Black. Yeah. The pipeline we propose to lay in Dutch Borneo will run from here to here. What is the terrain like, Mr. Black? Well, there's a range of mountains here and then swamp and jungle. Tough going? Very tough. That's why we need a good man to superintend the job. How did you happen to pick me, Mr. Black? You were highly recommended by a friend of mine. Her uh, cigarette. Thank you, no. After all, a man who carried on with the Eastgate project against the odds that you did. Too bad you couldn't go through with it. I will someday. Mm. I'm sure of it. In the meantime, here's a job that needs doing right now. And we'll pay well. I could surely use it. Uh, you're not married, are you? No, not yet. That's good. We don't send family men out in that country. You'd have to leave right away. How long should the job take? You'd have to sign up for two years. Jeff, you can't go. You simply can't go to the end of the world and leave us here. Do you think for a moment I want to go? Oh, it's a grand job, a wonderful chance. But if I had anything half as good here, I, I wouldn't even consider it. But you'll have something here if you wait. Uncle promised to do something. I don't want that sort of job. I told you before. Jeff, I'm going with you. Now, that's the spirit. You can't go, but, but just the same, that's the spirit. You see, they... they won't take a married man on the job. Oh, but, Jeff, think how long it is. How desperately long. 
two whole years to wait. I know. I wanted to tell you. I'm not asking you to wait for me, Lola. It's not fair. Now, look here, Jeff Hale. I can't stop you from going, but you just try to stop me from waiting for you. Mm. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Penny. Corporal, where's Borneo? Uh, Borneo? Borneo. Oh, uh, he's moved up in Harlem. Borneo isn't a man. It's a place. Where is it? Borneo. Oh, sure. That's where that big light come from in the sky. Nights. What light? The roar of uh, Bornellis. Everybody's heard of that. I haven't. Well, it's sort of north. Way up north near the North Pole. That's where Borneo is. Full of icebergs and polar bears? Yes, ma'am. Just stick your little nose outside of the door and you'll freeze to death. And if the polo bears don't eat you, the Eskimos do. Oh. Gus. Yeah? Gus, this is important. I want a man's angle on it. A what? Borneo. Bo now listen, beautiful, I'm in a hurry. So am I. I've only got a few days. Where's Borneo? Well, it's, uh... It's near Gibraltar. Where's Gibraltar? Well, I just told you, it's, uh, it's near Borneo. Didn't you ever hear the wild man of Borneo? That's it. Wild men, lions, tigers, swamps, fevers. Uh, well, I gotta get to work. The corporal said it was full of icebergs and polar bears. Ah, oh, that's in winter. If anyone had lived there for two years, could they ever come back alive? Not a chance. Now, you stay right here in little old New York and let Borneo take care of itself. But, please, you'll do everything you can think of, won't you? I, I mean, if one thing doesn't work, you won't stop. You'll go right on. Count on me, darling. I want him to stay here just as much as you do. Not quite as much, because, after all, you've got Milton in and all. And I'll be alone. But, Miss Lola, even if he says no a hundred thousand times, you just insist. If you insist long enough with my daddy, he always gives in. Sometimes. What are you doing with those shirts? I have to look them over. You can't go to Borneo without buttons on your shirts. My socks. But you've looked them over. Oh, sure, once. But I have to double check. I wouldn't think of letting you go without double checking. That's the second time you raided those socks. Aren't they double checked enough? Well, after all, these are socks. You can't check them too much. You might find a hole in a sock any time. And then what would those Borneonians say? They'd say, now, what kind of a woman is taking care of this poor man? There! Just look at that. And this is a triple check. What you'll do away off in Borneo without me to look after you, I hardly can imagine. I don't think I'll pack any more today. After all, there's no hurry. We still have two more full days. You might not go. What's that? Anything can happen in two days. What if somebody did something for Uncle Sam? And Uncle Sam did something for business. Then you wouldn't have to go to Borneo, would you? No, I wouldn't have to go, Penny. But don't you count on it, partner, because it won't happen. There's no use of our fooling ourselves, is there? Woodpeckers? Oh, no, not at the Riverview. No, 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 no. Of course not. 
Well, I, for one, intend to find out just what it is. If I'm not back in 15 minutes, <clears throat> call the police. Let me in. It's Mr. Waters. What? Mr. Waters. It's Mr. Waters. It's Mr. Waters. Yeah. What? Let me in this moment. I know it. I know it wasn't rheumatism I felt in my bones. Well, open up. Who's in there? Don't let him in. If he catches me, I'll be flat on my social security. Be calm, everybody. Be calm. Take it easy. Shh. Be calm. Shh. Don't let him in now. He'll spoil everything. Well, I guess it's up to me. It's up to me, all right. Old Gus is going to save the day. I demand entrance. In this moment. Oh. Who's in there? As the Rotary Club. No, no, that's ridiculous. There's something wrong going on in there. Well, sure, sure. They're rotating. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Now, you tell me this instant what's wrong. All right, all right. Do you really have to know? I certainly do. It's termites. Giant termites. Why, the building is full of them. You hear them? Yes. Why hasn't somebody told me about this before? I'll have the exterminators here in five minutes. Uh, well, of course, you know, I, I may be mistaken. Yeah. I, I very seldom am, but there's always that off chance, you know. <laughs> uh, probably you better listen and hear for yourself. Do you hear anything? No. <laughs> you will in a minute. Oh! 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 oh. Pardon me, my little lamb's letters. Help! Help! Nothing is, is a cheerful affinity. I'm looking for help. I'm looking for help. You'll hear something. I'm looking for help. Help! 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 around this neighborhood waiting for a statement from Henshaw. Whenever I ask him a question, he always gives me is it and kit. Hey, get a load of that. What's going on here, sister? It's a benefit for Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam? Yes, Mr. Samuel G. Henshaw. He's in a very bad way, you know. He needs help. Samuel G. Henshaw's in a bad way? Yes, the slump and everybody hanging on his neck. So we're giving him a benefit. Angel child, the fourth estate salutes you. Then let go of your nickel. <laughs> There's somebody back of this. It's no child's prank by a long shot. It's a plot, I tell you. Okay. A plot. But who did it? Who did this thing? That's what I want to know. Who did it? Okay. Yeah, they couldn't bluff me out of it. So now they're going to try to laugh me out of it. <laughs> laugh me out. Uh, it's an insidious, okay. diabolical, underhanded okay. scheme to discredit me. Yeah. And why are you standing there like a lot of dummies? Do something. Get down to the Riverview. Find out who's responsible for this and bring them in here. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Okay. Look at that. Samuel G. Henshaw. Okay. Yeah. A cartoon of... Well, where are you taking me? Mr. Henshaw wants to see you, young lady. Uncle Sam? Oh, that's different. <laughs> We have the guilty party, sir. Well, where is he? Let me at him. Yeah, yeah. What's the meaning of this? She's the one that got up the benefit. Yeah, yeah. 
Come in here. Sit down. You get. You were the one that gave that benefit for me. Yes, sir. Why? So my daddy wouldn't have to go away for two years. What in gosh old fish oaks has a benefit for me got to do with your father going away for two years? Everything. If somebody helps you, then you help business. And business will help him, then you won't have to go, will it? Yeah, no. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, how do I know? Penny. You shouldn't have come so soon. No, I didn't come here soon enough. Yeah, nobody but you would have the nerve to show his face to me. But now that you are here... Wait a minute, Mr. Henshaw. I'm sure that everything can be explained. Yeah, explained? Huh? Can you explain about headlines running a benefit for me? Can you explain about making me a laughing stock all over America? I probably can if you let me. Yes or no? Did you tell this child that I was responsible for the slump? Certainly not. That I was responsible for business going to the dogs? For my troubles, your troubles, everybody's troubles, including the blessed fact that you had to go away somewhere for two years. Yes, certainly not. Why, Daddy, didn't you say that when Uncle Sam got in trouble, that the people got scared? Yes, but... And when the people got scared, there was a slump? And when there was a slump, business got bad? And when that happened, nobody built any buildings? Yes, but let her alone. Didn't you say that everybody ought to get together and help Uncle Sam instead of pulling on him? Yes, yes, but let's get back to Mr. Henshaw. But I am back to him. He's Uncle Sam, isn't he? Yeah. Him? Me? Uncle, Uncle Sam? Sam? Aha. All right, then. Here's the money. Huh? do something about business now, won't you, Uncle Sam? Mr. Henshaw, I think I can explain everything now. What do you suppose I've got brains for? And there's lots of it. And this is only the beginning. I'll give a benefit every week. The benefit. <gasps> the benefit. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Penny, wait a minute. Yeah, you two, come back here. Mugs, button your lips. This is show is going to start, and I don't want no trouble from you either. Get it? The voice song will be sung by Lottie and Letty, who left their work downstairs in the beauty parlor to come up and help us out. The costumes was lent by a couple of the bellboys upstairs. And anybody who don't want to suck in a puss, better clap when it's over. <laughs> Every show should have a beginning, you must admit. This show has a beginning, and we are it. And we've been told that you can't go wrong if you open a show with an opening song. Now, we wouldn't call this a great song. We wouldn't dream of it. The basic theme of it is much too silly to mention. But we fondly believe that you'll enjoy singing it. That's why we're bringing it to your attention. <laughs> We, the boys who meet you, the boys who greet you, cream of curbstone cadets, with our brass buttons and epaulets. Let us say good morning beneath your awning. Watch the play that it gets. It's the brass button and epaulets. Even with your job, don't pay much dough, but we sure get the elegant clothes to wear. So when you uniform it, a New York doman, be sure to see that he get lots of class, lots of brass, buttons and epaulets.
Hey, what's going on here? Oh, that's just what I'm trying to find out. I'm so sorry. But... Pardon, I... How about the police uh, department? The riot uh, squad. I demand her arrest in the name of the law. Yeah, what do you mean by breaking up my show? Your show? Certainly my show. You can read, can't you? Benefit for Uncle Sam? Huh. I'll sue the Riverview for this. Oh, Mr. Henshaw, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm so uh, sorry. Uh, well, you better go. This is all a hideous mistake. What do you mean, a mistake? We ought to take you in for this. All right, take me. Lock me up. Throw the key away. Solitary confinement. I come, I come happily. Take him away, boy. Come on. Come on. Oh, Mr. Henshaw. Mr. Henshaw. Are you or are you not closing down your industry? Are you liquidating all your assets? Will you give us a definite statement, Mr. Henshaw? Yes, Mr. Henshaw, a definite statement. Quiet. Okay. Close down my industries? Did I ever say so? No. Somebody's always trying to outguess me. And you can tell the public that I'm going to triple my present payroll. May we quote you, Mr. Henshaw? Verbatim. OK. And you can tell them, too, that that's the trouble with conditions today. Somebody starts a rumor, and what happens? Yeah, we're afraid. We start running like a lot of sheep. What we need is that good old American spirit. And to show you how cockeyed this rumor is, I'm starting work on the Eastgate project tomorrow. And this is the man that I'm putting in full charge of that worthy project. 
<laughs> he has vision, and <clears throat> courage. Yeah, and I'll clear out. I've got business. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hey, what is the meaning of this? Penny is here now. Hello, Gus. Hello, Miss Penny. Is my daddy here? Penny, come here, please. Penny, I have some sad news for you. But you'll be a brave little girl, won't you? Is, is it about my daddy? Yes, Penny. Has, has anything happened to him? No, no, dear, no. But he sent for you. You're going to leave us. Are you going to take me right now, Gus? Right this minute? Yes, Miss Penny. I'm going to live with my daddy at the Riverview. Yes, Miss Penny. On and on for keeps? Yes, Miss Penny. Oh, Gus. Uh, maybe I better wait outside. It's very sad news, Miss Vincent, but I want to be brave, even though I am going to miss everybody so much. And now I better pack, don't you think? Oh, yes. It's not polite to keep people waiting. No, dear. Please, may I be excused? I feel awful sad about leaving you, Miss Vincent. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Miss Burns. I wonder why Mr. Hale is taking her out of school so suddenly. They're going abroad, no doubt. It wouldn't be finances. His last check is overdue. Finances? Hardly. With the Riverview as an address? <laughs> Fine doorman you are. Let me go right through the door. What kind of a doorman you call that? Hello, Mr. Waters. I'm back. Uh, Miss Hale. Uh... Uh, Miss Hale, you're late. Oh, yes, Mr. Oui. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Que ça? La porte. Non, non, la porte. Attention. Attention. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Que ça? La terre. Non, non. Oh, vous êtes très stupide. All right, have it your way then. Who are you? Who are you? Who? Je m'appelle Penny. Je suis BDC. Mon papa est BDC. Oui, dear. What did you say? What did she say? Did you not listen? A lesson we have one week behind. J'habite d'ici. I live here. 
That proves how stupid you are. You don't live here, and neither does she. Don't mind him. He's all mixed up. I'm the one who lives here. My daddy and me. I beg your pardon. This is my uncle's apartment, and I live here with my mother and my sister and my uncle Sam. Now kindly vacate our premises. Do you think I don't know where I live? We've lived here three years, and unless you want trouble with my daddy, you better get out and... I'm more sorry than I can say, Mrs. Ramsby. I'm deeply embarrassed. Come along, Miss Hale. Come quickly. But why? I run along, little girl. Sketch you. Daddy! I'm taking you to your daddy, daddy right now. Well, this I... is very unfortunate. I apologize. It will never happen again, I assure you. I'm very sorry. I'm distraught, distraught. Daddy! Miss Hale, will you please... Daddy! Oh, listen, I want you... And children are impossible these days. They don't ask if they live in your house. They just tell you. They walk right in and tell you. You haven't a moment of privacy without some child coming in to tell you she lives with you. Mother, I pointed out her mistake to her emphatically. Not only in English, but in French. In French? But why did Daddy move? He liked our penthouse, and I loved it. Oh, questions, questions. Curiosity killed a cat once. Your cat? Uh, yes. Uh, no. And stop saying our penthouse. It isn't yours. Not anymore. Kitty! Kitty, darling! Oh, Kitty! Show, show Miss Hale to her father's apartment. Be quiet. Well, you protest to your mother. <coughs> Why, uh, your mother, I will submit. Uh, I certainly will. Not. Well, Mr. Sweet. Uh, I got something in my eye. Sweeping. Hmm. Let me try and get it out for you. It, it'll be all right. When I was a little boy, I always found the quickest way to remove extraneous matter from the eyes was to put something in the mouth. Thank you. Daddy. Daddy. I think I lost your job for you. Huh? I was up in the playroom, and I didn't mind what Gwendolyn said, but Mr. Waters came in and, and he said I shouldn't be there because I was only the engineer's daughter. Well, and so you are. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's honorable, isn't it? Absolutely. Daddy, I just don't understand. Why is everything so mixed up? Well, maybe this picture will make you understand. You see all these people? The farmer, the housewife, the laborer? Look what they're doing. They're all pulling on this one poor fellow, Uncle Sam. What has he done? He's done everything he can, and still it's not enough. He gives and he gives and he tries to make everything right. There just doesn't seem to be any end to it. Is he the president? He's greater than the president, darling. He's the most important thing in the whole country, maybe in the world. I don't think it's fair for everybody to worry Uncle Sam. Especially when he gives all the money he can all the time. <laughs> it's not only money, darling. He has to find places for people to live and clothes for them to wear. Find jobs. That's the most important thing. How are you going to like that? Mm. Daddy, it's a wonder somebody doesn't try to help Uncle Sam for a change. Well, lots of us try. Well, I hope Uncle Sam doesn't get discouraged. Don't you worry about that. He's a tough old bird, and pretty soon he'll be back on his feet, stronger than ever, and then watch things boom. 
and I'll build the tallest buildings in the whole world, and lots of them. Then we'll be happy, won't we? Mm-hmm. Gus. Hello, Toots. Gee, but you're beautiful. Just like a repaint job. Oh, never mind that. Did you read the morning paper? No, I only look at the funny pictures. Why? Well, get a load of this. You may be looking for a job. And me with the ring almost paid for. Only 36 more installments. Never mind, baby. You can always eat as long as I got a job. Can I? Yeah, dog biscuits. Gee, you're a swell kid. Ooh, aren't those pretty? White orchids. The most delicate of flowers. How do you do, Mr. Henshaw? I'm all right. Yeah, well, how about a statement, Mr. Henshaw? No! Uh, uh, I don't any packages, sir. None of your orchids! Yeah, well... Who's that? That's my Uncle Sam. Everybody knows him. Aren't you going to help it? And implicate myself? Hardly. Shame on you, Brady Cat. It's the only way to save the country. Miss Hale, uh, really, Mr. Henshaw, I can't tell you how sorry I what am. What have you to be sorry for? Uh, why, uh, this young lady, isn't she annoying you? Uh, well. Well. Uh, well. Here, you. Milton, come back here. Get, uh, my nephew. <laughs> uh, walking encyclopedia with curly hair, dressed up in fancy pants, and he's supposed to fill my shoes someday. I guess you get pretty tired of it all, don't you, Uncle Sam? Yeah, tired? I'm sick of the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> it... Say, who are you, anyway? I'm Penny. You're Penny? Oh, yeah. I suppose that's what you're waiting for. No, thank you. Why not? There are too many people. It's a wonderful way to earn money. Just playing with dogs. Yeah, that's what I thought when I took the job. But everybody's got their troubles, I guess. Gee, even little half pints like you. Now, you got a good, strong chin. Keep it up, darling, no matter what happens. What for? Oh, well, Penny. Hello, uh, uh, Miss Lucho. Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale. Daddy. Penny. to the penthouse. A lot of funny people live there now. No wonder you moved down here. Did Gus take you up there? Oh, no. I just supposed. I mean, I thought Gus didn't take me. Well, he's working for those people now because we haven't any job for him. I sold our car. Oh. Well, then, you and I are going to have a lot of nice walks together, aren't we? <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember how hard I used to work before you went away to school? How I was always planning buildings and putting them up? We had hardly any time at all to be together. And you were tired all the time. Well, that wasn't so good, was it? But it made money. We had money to live in a penthouse and have a car and Gus and all the others. But now it's awfully hard to get jobs. And there seem to be enough buildings. So I'm not working when we haven't so much in our pocketbook. But you see what that means? It means we have all that extra time to be together. That's a lot better, isn't it? Sure it is. But there's one thing I want to do. There's one thing I want to finish. That's the one building your daddy wants to finish. Why? I put all my money into it. A lot of other men did, too, because it, it took a great deal. Then we had bad times, and a, and a banker came along and took it away from us. What 
that's a banker? <laughs> well, a banker? Uh, a banker is the sort of person that, uh, that keeps things that belong to other people. You mean a burglar? <laughs> oh, no. No, darling, not that. But we're not licked. And your daddy is going to make that banker understand that he must let me go through with the deal. And then we can move upstairs and you can go back to school. Who wants to go upstairs and go back to school? Not me. I like it here. There aren't so many stairs to climb and the rooms are small. I don't have to walk around so much. <laughs> My legs are so short. It used to wear me out walking across that big apartment. And it was so high. I used to get dizzy looking down at all the people. Remember? Mm -hmm. Now it's different. I can look up. It'll be fun guessing what kind of people go with all those feet. And besides, it's about time somebody looked after you. A man without a woman around the house is quite a problem. Stand still, Corset. Why do they call him Corset? Well, he's tied in all day and they let him loose at night. Hello, uh, uh. oh, Penny Darling. Hello, Miss Lola. Welcome home. My goodness, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Miss Lola. I'm glad I went away. It's so much fun to come home again. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Well, now, what do we do first? Go to a movie or take a drive in the park or... Well, I may not have much time. I have a man to take care of. And you know how much trouble they can be. I certainly do. Well, we'll talk about it later. Bye, darling. Bye, Miss Lola. Isn't she nice, Kitty? When she came up to see me at school with Daddy, even Miss Vincent liked her. She's okay, but believe me, the rest of her tribe are wacky. Hey, baby, look. Look what I want on a punch board. Well, you didn't do bad for a punch drunk. Yeah. I'm going back every day. Maybe I'll punch out a swing band. <laughs> Keep punching. That's what I always say. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. What is that thing? That ain't a thing. It's a sax. A lease breaker. What do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Old Pickle Puss upstairs is liable to come down here all spraddled out. A pickle Puss? Is that what you call Mr. Waters? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I wouldn't repeat it if I were you. Why shouldn't you repeat it? What's the harm in calling the Pickle Puss a Pickle Puss? You might give the kid ideas. You know, you're not exactly up on child psychology. I ain't down on it. <laughs> Anyone can sing this song. Change keys, it really doesn't matter. Stand still, a lot of silly chatter. Hold, hum, we come me to the pattern. Jack and Jill, we went up the hill. And for all I know, they're up there still. I must say, the music is pretty. Must say, the words are not so witty. This is a happy little ditty. You can sing it all day long. Is a happy little ditty. I know the music isn't pretty. You know the words are not so witty. Anyone can sing this song. Change the keys, it really doesn't matter. It's just a lot of silly trouble. Hold on, kids, we're coming to the patter. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. It must have been awful stuffy in there. Still sigh, the music isn't pretty. Still sigh, the words are not so wither. This is a happy little ditty. You can sing it all day long.
Mr. Hale, I may owe you a debt of gratitude for past favors, but... Now what's happened? But I am jeopardizing my position by allowing you to reside here any longer. What are you leading up to? Your daughter. She has a capacity for making otherwise sane individuals go perfect. Now, unless you teach her to respect the dignity of the Riverview Arms, you must go, or I shall have to get a new engine, uh, engineer. No, that is final. Final. Sweetheart, not that. But what have you been doing, Mr. Waters? Oh, don't let's talk about me all the time. How about you? I have my fingers crossed and my feet crossed. Did that big back listen to our plan? He did not. He wouldn't even see me. Never mind. If he comes here, we'll throw him out. We won't be here to throw him out if you don't behave. Waters will throw us out. Why can't people be nice to other people? Wait a minute. That's it. What's it? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's going to be all right now. I'm going to see a man. When I come back, everything's going to be all fixed. Money, job, and everything. Jeff! Lola. Listen, he's all alone. There isn't a soul in the house. Well, you're an angel. Never seen you before. I think it's time you did. Huh? I worked for you for two years. Oh, yeah? Did I fire you? What's your name? Jeff Hale. Yeah. I think you'll remember the name. Oh, Mr. Hale. Yeah, the expensive Mr. Hale. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hale, the architect. Yeah, the man who dreamed of the majestic Eastgate project. I worked through Mr. Warner, my attorney. Yeah, well, you may have worked through him, but you got to me. For ten million dollars. Yeah, you're the genius that handed me that ten million dollar lemon. It isn't a lemon. If you had vision, you... Vision? Don't you talk to me about vision. Get... Come here. Yeah, look, look at that. Yeah, I don't need any vision to see that. But I'll need a lot to see any of that ten million dollars again. Who let you in here, young man? If you want the truth, Lola did. 
She believes in this project. She believes in me. And I believe that you are the nerviest rascal that I ever met in a life knee-deep in rascals. Using my niece to get in here, feeding her your crack brain schemes. Careful. Remember your stomach. Yeah, you leave my stomach out of it. And you leave her out of it, too. She's crack brain enough without your help. She's the sanest one in the family at that. But they're all Einsteins compared to you. Je Come here. Now, you get. Mr. Henshaw. Get! Jack, what happened? How'd it come out? Awful. Oh, darling, sit down and tell me all about it. There isn't much to tell. I told him, and then he told me, but he had an edge. And he wouldn't even listen to what you had to say? Honestly, darling, even if he is my own uncle, Don't, sometimes Bob, you I... can't call him anything that I haven't. Jeff, I know how we could get around him. Well, let's forget about it. Oh, so you're quitting. I'm not quitting, but what can I do? Listen, Jeff, I've been handling him since I was a little girl, and I've always gotten what I wanted. You won't get anywhere trying to fight with him. You've got to go around him. Come on, let's try it my way. Just to make conversation, what's your way? By way of Connecticut. Come on. Connecticut? What do we do in Connecticut? Get married. Married? Yes, don't you see, Jeff, once you're in the family, my uncle would have to do something. His pride would be at stake. What about my pride? Well, you can be proud when the building's built and people live in it. It's a failure now. You can't be proud of that. You don't understand. What good would it do me to get it that way? Supposing it flopped, then look. Married. Starting out married life in the basement. Oh, but darling, I don't care where I live if it's with you. That's what you think now. But you wouldn't think so as month after month passed on. First you'd make up with the old weasel, then you'd start calling on the penthouse, and before long you'd see no reason why I shouldn't move up there with you. So that's what you think of me. That's how much faith you have in my love for you. I'm trying to be realistic. Don't tell yourself stories, Just Lola. because you're a quitter, you think I'm a quitter, too. So I'm a quitter. That's a lovely sentiment. Nice to know. All right, I'll prove it to you. I'm quitting right now. Good. That suits me fine. Mother's little lamb. Now you go to the playroom, darling. Be sure and play only with the good little boys and girls. Be careful of your nice new suit. Oh, oh darling. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, au revoir, maman. <laughs> au revoir, mon petit. <laughs> now don't forget to come back for cocktails. Tea, darling. Mother wants to show you off to her friends. You squealers always get. Yeah. I guess that'll teach you a lesson. You can't fool a G woman. G man, how many times do you I got to? Can't fool a G man. Now we'll get the other rat to squeal. Who is he, Muggsy? Not me. I'll cut it off, Muggsy. I'm not the last time. Fight the squealer. You want to play? I wouldn't be adverse to it. Does that mean he does or don't? I don't know. Okay, you're the squealer. You mean I'm the informer? You'll find out what we mean. Come on, we're taking you for a ride. That's what happened to guys with rat on the gang. Just a minute. I'll be something else. I don't choose to be a squealer. Well, we choose you. <laughs> Courage for a girl. For a play in that neighborhood, I have to have. I trust this is the inception of a beautiful friendship. Oh, do you want to play some more? Oh, Come no. On. That's more like work. But I can take you up to the playroom. That's far superior to anything in town. I know. I used to play there. We can have a ripping time. Tag, you're it! Why? I just can't. 
came up to play with Milton. Our mothers would never stand for our playing with you. Miss Hale, you will leave here at once. Why, Mr. Waters? Miss Hale doesn't belong here. She's the daughter of our house engineer, and she's not allowed in the playroom. He can't put you out if I want you here. Your mother would certainly uphold me, Master Ramsby. Never mind, Milton. It's a good thing Mr. Waters came, because I almost forgot. I have to help my daddy get dinner. <laughs> <laughs> 